Well, top of the morning, Southern Oregon. Welcome back to the Real Estate Show. We're so excited to welcome Jean Yeager uh, to the studio today. She's going to be in in a couple of minutes. Uh, she was very instrumental in getting the first ever dog park established in the city of Eagle Point. It's a very interesting story about uh, community use of real estate and uh, hoops to jump through, no pun intended, and also a ribbon cutting uh, that is coming up in just a couple of weeks. So we welcome Jean Yeager, uh, who was helpful in the Chamberlain dog park, the new new dog park in Eagle Point. Before we uh, bring Jean into the studio, let's do our usual check-in with the three counties of Southern Oregon and see how housing is doing this week. Let's start with Klamath County. Klamath County year over year, single family residential prices are down 17% this week. The average single family home in Klamath County costing $258,307. The number of solds in Klamath County were also down year over year this week and they were down by 38%. We had 13 closings on SOMLS. The number of listings, however, in Klamath County this week, year over year, were up 7%. Yay for that. There were 237 active residential listings in Klamath County on SOMLS this week. So uh, there's the ray of sunshine in Klamath County. At least you have an increase in supply. Josephine County this week, year-over-year year, prices were up 2%. The average single-family residential home in Josephine County this week costing $493,929. The number of solds year-over-year year this week in Josephine County were neutral. It wasn't plus, it wasn't minus. There were about 14 closings on SOMLS in Josephine County this week. The number of listings year over year in Josephine County are up this week, year over year, a whopping 21%. We had 309 active listings on SOMLS in Josephine County this week. That is incredible news. Uh, even though, folks, you can see that we're getting a little more increase in uh, inventory, uh, it's still less than what we need. More than last year, but less than what we need. Let's finish up with Jackson County before we talk to Jean. Uh, Jackson County prices year over year are up 19%. The average single family home in Jackson County this week costing $548,308. So congratulations, Jackson County. That's a nice bump up. The number of solds in Jackson County year over year this week were up 8%. We had 37 closings on SOMLS in Jackson County in the residential market this week. The number of listings in Jackson County were up 10%. We had 672 active listings on SOMLS in the residential market in Jackson County this week. So Jackson County was the big winner. Uh, prices are up, number of solds are up, and listings are up. So all three categories that we track every week are up in Jackson County. Josephine and Klamath County are still a little volatile. And again, folks, we're tracking this week over week so that we can find the micro trends and start getting ready for them to turn into macro trends. And if they don't, we see it because we track it every week. Uh, if you've got any um, homes or properties that you want to put on the market, it's not too late. But for now, we got to get ready to welcome Jean Yeager talking about the dog park. Well, Jean, thank you so much for being on the show today. This is really exciting. Welcome. My pleasure. So um, the reason we're talking to you today is because uh, you have created the uh, dog park in Eagle Point, which has just been a real coup. So we're super excited just to kind of hear about you and how the idea started. Well, it wasn't really me. I just um, worked within the parameters of the city and the dog park boosters. But let me um, kind of give you some background. Yeah. I started with, um, when I moved to Eagle Point, I've been living here for about four years. I lived in Samus Valley for about 30 years. So I'm local. And um, I thought, I, it's time, I'm retired, I need to do something. So I needed to uh, contribute to my community. 
So I saw this position that was opening and I applied for it and it's um, called the neighbor Eagle Point Neighborhood Enhancement Commission. And the city council um, created this commission and what they do is they come up with ideas and this commit and then they assign tasks to this commission to explore and and get back and report to this to the city council so that's i got appointed to the commission and then um the first thing we did was we were assigned to work on the master parks plan for the whole community so what we did is we went out and visited all the parks and then um, we worked with the university of oregon they had a team and we went out and surveyed people and um, went to all the parks and spent time there and, and talked to people as they came and went and asked them what they would like to see in their community parks. Wow, so were, that's a great idea. Yeah, and so there were things like the uh, skateboard park and better playgrounds, more cover, um, maybe some trails off of some of the parks, um, a dog park. So then the next thing we went back and we were working with the city council and the neighborhood um, enhancement commission. And they, they decided that maybe we should look into a dog park. So that's how we got started in Eagle point with the dog park. And that's how I got involved. And then um, a separate entity has nothing to do with the neighborhood enhancement Co commission uh, is the Eagle point dog park boosters group and it's a very small group and they're really interested in you know improving the conditions for the dogs and if you ever come to eagle point and, and just drive around everybody's walking dogs all times are, of the that's day true. And, night. and we have a wonderful path around the golf course and a lot of people use that and downtown and just there's just a ton of places for the dogs but there's no fenced in area. And if, if you have a dog like mine who will not come back, <laughs> no matter how much I call her, I need to have a fenced in area. So that was a need. And so we went back to the um, commission the, and the commissioners decided that we would work on a dog park and this, and with the blessing of the city council and the mayor and all of that. So that's how I got started with it. And then it just kind of, got crazy i mean we just um started talking to people and people were kind of cool at first because i didn't realize it because i'm not with the history of the town that much the i guess there had been talk for years and years of a dog park and then nothing ever happened oh so, you know they were kind of like oh sure you know these people you know they want a dog park you know big deal and then uh as we got more and more into it and the boosters started getting involved uh, and getting, ed, you know, educating our community, people started getting excited. So we had um, all the, the city decided, we decided as the NEC decided to settle on Little Butte Creek Park, which is by the creek, kind of across from the mill, the Butte Creek Mill. And so that was how, where were we going to do it? And that was in, um, Oh gosh, it was in 1920, the end of 22, I think. So in the in 19 in 2023, in June, the park was supposed to be fenced off. And we didn't have enough room there for two parks, one for little and one for big. So, but we were just happy to be able to get some space. And then um as time went on, June rolled by and nothing happened, and the fence didn't go up and the, you know, everybody's kind of getting antsy and we're wondering what's going on. And we talked with the mayor and she says, well, uh, it was decided, I guess, that that park wasn't really a good place for the um, park or gotcha. for the dogs. Because uh -huh. I guess in the winter, the, it's against the hill and it gets real icy and it doesn't ever thaw out in the winter time. So, okay, that's why they didn't do it there. But then it took forever. And this is the frustrating part of of dealing with, you know, all the entities that you deal with there were lots of ideas oh let's do it at lucas park let's do it here then there was some extra school grounds that we thought maybe we would be able to use and uh, none of that came through and then our department um director of public works he 
he can't, he says, you know, Chamberlain Park's really probably big enough to do that. It won't be a huge park, you know, for the dogs, but it's, it'll be good. And so with his help, he kind of spearheaded that spot. And I went out and met with him and a couple of the um, uh, dog park booster people went out and he actually measured it, walked it off and measured it. And when we saw it, was plenty of room for the dogs so and the best part was that we have a big area for big dogs and a little area for little dogs so dogs under 20 pounds have a a safe place to play and then there's always the big dogs you know so that's exciting and so then um the next thing we um decided on was ah when to get it fenced and so after christmas the park, the city um, said, well, I think we can get it done before spring. And so a uh, couple, two, three weeks ago, we got our fencing in and it's been amazing since then. And, and I just wanted to share that people, the community, people in the community want to help, but they, they, they need the encouragement and you have to have a specific task for them to do so in other words if they say i want to volunteer you've got to let them know what they can do and then they're they're willing to do it so that's really interesting because it sounds like you have a lot of support but you have to really be clear what you want from people right so uh we're talking to gene yeager we have uh the makings of a brand new dog part in the city of eagle point we do have to take a quick break and say thank you to our sponsors do not touch the style it's amazing how this all came about you're not going to want to miss a thing from gene yeager we'll be right back after these quick words well welcome back southern oregon to the real estate show we're talking to gene yeager today uh, she's been very instrumental in uh, bringing about the first ever dog park in the city of Eagle Point. Welcome, Jean. Thank you. So right before the break, we were uh, doing just a little bit of history. And one of the interesting things that I wasn't aware of is that when you're, well, first of all, when you're trying to help organize volunteers, that it helps to be real specific. And then secondly, that um, the public works folks were super instrumental in helping you solve the problem of the location. They actually jumped in and, and weighed in on that. Yes, and that was a huge help. That kind of got us off of the, you know, kind of in us, we were at a spot that we didn't seem to be able to move off of. And so that really helped us. And um, the support of the mayor helping too, you know, we would talk to her and she'd say, oh, well, you know, let me talk to, you know, whoever. And then that helped a lot. And then I would like to emphasize that um, there were lots of support from the city. Um, The city recorder helped us with getting a newsletter out for one of our big fundraisers in October, the Halloween event. And um, we got to put a flyer in the um, water bill. Did you really? And that was fabulous because everybody that got a water bill also found out about the activity and the dog park. And so that was extremely helpful. And um, our police chief, he came to the activities and he's he's coming to the next act, activity this month. And he's very community oriented and just very supportive. And the fire department was very helpful. And it's just been uh, really nice to be able to work with that. And then the other thing that was exciting was last night I went to the city council meeting and um, I got to stand up and I was all excited. And I said, we did it. We built it. You know, we got it built. And everybody was laughing, you know, and having a good time. It was really a good feeling because you could tell um, some of the council members uh, chimed in later and said they were um, amazed at how excited our community was to have the dog park. And I thought that was wonderful because it was a little slow getting it together and getting people enthusiastic about a dog park. Because there there are some negatives that people come up with about the dog park, you know, for fear of liability and all of that. But we learned from our city attorney that the city is not liable for any, like if your dog got in a, a little fight or something, 
or a dog got bit or whatever, that's between the people that are using the park. It's on them. They have to resolve that. So that's a good thing to know that um, the city isn't liable for like a lawsuit because that was one of our concerns. You know, I mean, that's always a concern. So anyway, that was a little negative. And then um, some of the veterinarians are concerned about disease and all of that, you know, with dogs running around. But um, our thought was that, you know, if you're a responsible dog owner, your dogs are going to be vaccinated for everything that they need to be vaccinated for. So that should not be a, a major concern. And so those were the two kind of negative things. And so we overcame those. So that was fun. And then uh, because of all the excitement, I've been going out and talking to people that are using the park. And the fun thing is um, this gentleman came up to me and he said, I'm going to donate a pooper scooper, you know, and leave it in the pen. And we do have waste stations already in each pen. So there's bags and a place to put well, dogs. That's good. Yeah. So that's already in. We don't have our water system in yet. And um, Brett Marshall, our public works um, department head, he's going to try to do it this summer, maybe. He thought maybe next summer, but we might get um, water to the pen. So there'd be a watering station. And what's really neat is that it's going to be a drinking fountain, a place where you can fill up a water bottle, and also a bowl, you know a station for the dogs to drink out of. Oh, so, okay. So it's kind of a threefold thing. So it, you know, it's it's good to have everybody have water, especially in the summer. The other thing that's really great about our park is we've got some beautiful big trees. So in the summer, there's going to be plenty of shade. So one of the other things that uh, the community has been kind of um, asking for now is maybe in the have some kind of a cover for in the winter that they can stand under if it's rainy, you know, and oh, let the that's dogs. That's a good run. idea. And so there's would... lots of kinds of things. Um, the other thing is that because of all of this coming into play, I had a lady come up after the um, last meeting that I was uh, at at the NEC meeting, and she wants to donate a bench uh, in memory of her dog. So there's oh. all kinds of possibilities for us to do those kinds of things. So that's pretty exciting. We we thought um, people are just coming out of the woodwork. It's just amazing. So I think what happened is people actually saw that we have fencing and there is a dog park now. And so now they're more willing to come and, and do things for the, for the park. Well, and it sounds so, like historically there was a lot of disappointment because yeah, it just never happened before. And now all of a sudden it is so people can have something to get on board with. Yeah. Especially the old time residents of Eagle Point. They're going, yeah, yeah, you know, we're going to have a dog park. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. You know what that feels like. Yeah. Um, so uh, in the meantime, that's all the city part of it. And then the dog park boosters is operating outside of, of any city you know, uh, involvement really, but we do work together and we go to, to the meetings and we, um, have suggestions and it's kind of fun. It's been a good partnership actually. Um, so the, what came, what came first, the, the work with the city, the boosters, or were they, uh, in tandem? They weren't in tandem. They were, um, the city is a total separate entity. So, um, and then the boosters, just because they saw that that was starting to happen, they kind of got in gear. And I, they, before I joined the boosters, um, I didn't actually join the boosters. I went to see what they were all about and what they, you know, what they could do for the city and the NEC, you know, as far as I wanted to see what their, what their thoughts were. Uh -huh. And so all of a sudden I got sucked in and <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm in both groups, but they're totally separate. Uh huh. And, um, the dog park boosters are, they, they got together and they got together with the, um, Eagle Point Parks Foundation. That's a nonprofit group. So we are, they are an umbrella under the, um, Eagle Point Parks Foundation, so they are our nonprofit, which is good. So that's that's another thing. And one of our member, one of the members of the Booster Club, is on the board for that foundation. So um, it all ties in, you know. And that's another thing I wanted to kind of talk about is networking. 
And, and you, of all people, know what that means. But people don't realize how important networking is. Talking to everybody, going to your businesses, letting them know what's going on, try to involve them, whether it's um, a, a donation for a raffle or money donation or whatever, advertising, sticking your, your, your information on their employee bulletin board or um, public bulletin boards. I mean, like the Butte Creek Mill has a big public. Um, bulletin board on their porch there you know that kind of thing the grange you know we there's a million gazillion places you can put your information so that was uh, one of the things that the booster club is trying to do is try to educate people number one that there there we want a dog park number two you know they've got to know how the rules are and stuff and that's another thing we're getting our rules signed um printed up and the city's doing that for us and they're they've got the rules of the dog park and so, so that'll are, be posted there what what are the rules well i don't have a, a one by one but there's things like uh don't bring your dog if uh, she's in estrus you know we don't want to have the dogs in heat uh-huh um, uh, pick up after yourself you know um if your dog is kind of unruly and getting out of control, you know, please remove your dog, you know, those kinds of things, common sense things. Mm -hmm. And, but it's not common sense necessarily for everybody. So those are things you have to kind of put forward. And then, um, uh, so we'll have that signing up. So that'll be good for us. And then the other thing is, as far as getting back to networking media, and you definitely know how important media is. Um, anything, Facebook, whatever you belong to. You know, we have, um, you know, there's Facebook, there's websites, all of that. So, you know, you have to get out there and get your word out. Newspapers, we have had wonderful coverage with the newspapers, the Upper Road Independent Journal. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Grants, Grants Pass has been wonderful. So oh. those are the kind of things you reach out. We have front page pictures from them and like a two page article on the park on our Halloween event. So we are, we've been so excited about that. There's on the front cover of the upper road um, journal, independent journal today, it's coming out. There's a front page picture and a little article about the um, dog park and the upcoming April 27th event. So um, make sure to grab one of those papers. Well, we'll we'll talk more about that. Um, sorry, we got to take another quick break. We're talking to Gene Yeager and the creation of the first ever dog park in the city of Eagle Point. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Well, hey, Southern Oregon, welcome back to the Real Estate Show. Just a quick reminder, this episode will be airing again tomorrow, uh, Sunday at 8 a.m. M on our new radio home, 1300 AM, the ACE. We just love being here. Thanks to Joe Brett and uh, Pete Del Castro, who made all that happen. Let's get back to this interesting conversation we're having with Gene Yeager, very instrumental in creating the first ever uh, dog park in the city of Eagle Point. And uh, lots involved in making this happen. And uh, Nobody was really sure it was going to come to be, but here you are now. Yes, and it's we're all so excited. I I told her, I told Brett Marshall, I said I felt like when I went out and I saw the fencing and I saw dogs actually using the park, I I felt like a little kid at Christmas morning. I really oh. did. It was just a really great feeling, you know. It's been a lot of hard work and, you know, a lot of, you know, ups and downs and all of that but it, it's really worth it and that's the one of the things i really would like to stress to community people get involved in no matter what it is get involved even if it's just a little bit on the outside of that activity just get involved you'll be surprised how rewarding it is well and the uh, networking that you did um really seemed just kind of build some momentum with the community unbelievable it's you don't realize especially if you've lived in a community for a little while you get up you go to work you take the kids to school you do whatever but you don't realize how many people that you really do know and that have um 
talents and, and capabilities. And that's the other thing. You've got to get out there and go to your um, activities, like your town activities. Like we have a 4th of July, July parade. We have a vintage fair. We have stuff at the View Creek Mill all the time. We have um, uh, a Halloween event. I mean, we have all kinds. Uh, we have a like a hoot nanny thing downtown you know, it's just <laughs> if you go to those you're going to start meeting people uh pancake breakfasts uh oh, just amazing things and if you start talking to people um one thing i've started doing is if they have a card i get their card so that when i have an activity i kind of rifle through those cards to see hmm, this person might have the ability to help me with this activity or they may know somebody oh what a great can... idea so the referral part of networking is astronomical i mean you know um i was invited to the um medford chamber of commerce uh greet, meet and greet at, and it happened to be a banner bank and I walked in and I happened to know a bunch of people that worked at that banner bank. Um, oh my gosh. And then they gave me an opportunity to get up and talk about our Halloween event. And afterwards, I I, I think at least 10 people came up, handed me their cards that I can help you with this. Oh, that's all me. Call me. I will get you in contact with this person. That kind of thing. That was invaluable. And I was accidentally got invited to that event because I went to Subaru and I talked to one of the men the, <laughs> there and he said oh my gosh the, uh, you have to come to the meet and greet it, this week and and so that's how it it builds you know I went to a pancake breakfast and I met somebody from the school district here and they're um involved with um um People with disabilities that young people that go to a prom, they may have a prom and it's, they do the whole thing, limousines and get them formals. And, and so, it sounded like so much fun. I said, I would love to do that when that comes up next year. So, you know, those are the kind of things you just don't realize how you start piggybacking on all of that. So I wanted to emphasize that. Also, um, we've created, I think, really good contacts with the newspapers. And so when they hear from you, then they go, oh, I know this person. Yeah, I can talk about their activity for them. I can announce that they're having an activity. Well, that's great. So, yeah, so those kind of things. Uh, I can't emphasize how important that is. Um, so the dog park has the fence up right now, and it actually has dogs in it. I didn't realize you you opened already. Oh, yeah, the minute those those fences <laughs> went in and the gates went up the and then there's the sally port so you can walk into a little square and then you close the gate then you open the gate to the park which is nice because your dog dogs can't run out then oh i see there's a so it's a safety area, area. Uh -huh. yeah it, it's a, like a little pen uh -huh. and then it's gated then you walk into up to the other gate which lets you into the well this is all very pen. well thought out who who designed the park well our 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 um, public works person, uh, Brett Marshall, he, he came from um, Talent, and they had just built a really nice dog park. So uh -huh. he had a lot of experience, which was uh -huh. wonderful because we didn't have that experience, you know, as the Bark Park Boosters. And I don't think too many of this other city people hey. had any idea of, you know, really what takes to do that. So he was instrumental in all of that, you know, even the sign making, the mm -hmm. fencing. Um, oh, and I have to tell you this, I got to, this is so great. At city council, uh, after everybody got done talking about the dog park, how successful it is and everything, Brett says, um, I wanted to tell everybody that, and he was kind of cute about it. He goes, I, I was walking through our city um, graveyard with all the old equipment and stuff. And he said, there they were two fire hydrants <laughs> and so he painted them and put one in each of the pens <laughs> it is so great it was so cute and it, we just got such a big chuckle out of it so you know everybody like i said it's starting to snowball people are getting involved you know they're going oh wow i can do this and i could do that so and they're making suggestions and um we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago the 
boosters had a meeting and they invited the public right after the fencing was built and they wanted to ha get input more input from people and say okay now we've got the fencing what do you want and we had quite a few people come to that so that was exciting what kind of suggestions did you get well we had um one was having uh individual seating areas so you could have a, a small group conversations while the dogs are playing oh people. And this is interesting. He was from Southern California and he had just moved up here and he was talking about his dog parks in California. And he said that a byproduct of these parks was that they, a lot of them formed really great friendships with people because they're there them. with their dogs and they're talking about their dogs. And all of a sudden they're, they're friends and wow. they have they had little potlucks, you know, and all kinds of things. Oh, so is that right? I never thought about that. That's real strong community building. It's wonderful. You know, I think we're all so into our phones and our electric stuff. And now, you know, that's a way of getting out and actually talking to people. And it's really easy to talk about your dog. <laughs> because you have the best dog. You have the smartest dog. You have the cutest dog. So, you know, there's, and, and if you, and everybody loves their dog. So they have that one major thing in common. Oh, that's so cool. And so, it's like having kids. What if people have more than one dog? Okay. Um, that's How does good. that work? Can they, well, like, is there a capacity? You um, know, no, we have not, capa you know, as long as they have control of their dogs uh -huh. and they're well behaved and they're not, you know, causing fights and stuff like that. They could take as many as they want. And uh, to bring that up, I was at the park the other night and there were all these um, um, uh, doodle kind of dogs, you know, like a labradoodle. And a, uh -huh. you know, and the, there was a lady that she had racism in that community. And so they all were showing up together and they were all relatives, you know, and they were oh, wow. brothers and sisters and moms and dads and stuff. And it looked like a doodle conference, you know, oh, how so, fun. <laughs> so funny. It was darling, you know, so the, if there's a lot of side benefits that I did, I personally didn't even think about. I was thinking solely about the dogs mm -hmm. and, and now I can see the, how the community is, you know, coming together and have coming up with really neat ideas. And we are, um, we might put a few toys in like part, like agility things, like something, a little jump or a tunnel that they can run through or, you know, things like that. A little, like a gym for oh, dogs. Oh, that would be great. So we don't have a ton of room for that, but we could have a few items that they could, you know, use and utilize. And, and would you have um, like size appropriate for each little? Oh, you know, sure. Case? The small dogs would have their little things and the um, big dogs would have bigger things, of course. Uh -huh. So well, an agility um, course, that's a great idea. Wouldn't that be fun? And then uh, I will talk about that later, but um, coming up, we are going to have a, an agility course at our event. So oh, that would be fun. Okay. And um, the, so, um, the so thing about volunteers, like the Rogue Chamber of Commerce, or the Upper Rogue Chamber of Commerce, uh, helped us out with our dog um, Halloween event. And so, you know, those are great contacts. And they had people there to help us with uh, different activities, like the pie eating contest. And the, we had a big... Um, uh, silent auction so we raised quite a bit of money on that wow that that is incredible we're talking to jane yeager about the newly formed dog park in eagle point quite uh quite an event and uh, speaking of events we're going to talk about the dog park event that's coming up but we got to take another break and uh, say thank you to our sponsors so don't go away well, welcome back to The Real Estate Show, folks. I'm Alice Lima. I'm a broker with John L. Scott Real Estate and your host of the show. Uh, if you'd like to be a sponsor or a guest on the show, you can reach out to me directly at 541-301-7980. Uh, today, we're so excited. Congratulations, Gene Yeager on the newly formed Eagle Point Dog Park. Long time coming. Congratulations to you and your group. Thank you. Um, I would like to talk about our upcoming event. It's going to be April 27th from basically 10 to 4. There is going to be a um, registration, early registration at 9 a.m. 
There's also, um, if you get on our uh, Facebook and our website, there's a, um, a, a Venmo thing that you can pre-register. So if you want to do that, that's great. It's $25, $25 for the first dog. If you have more than one dog in your family and you want to walk both of them or three of them, the other dogs um, are $10 a piece. So is this like a parade or what? what is this? This is a dog walk. We're going to have a half a dog mile. walk. We're going to have a half mile walk and a mile walk, and it'll be through a through the neighborhood. Oh, how and, fun! And then we'll start out at the at Chamberlain Park, and then we'll end up back at the park. And so you can walk your dog anytime between ten and two. So you can come in and start the walk anytime between ten and two. And there will be a couple of water stations. So if you need a bottle of water, we'll have water out on the route for you. Um, it's mostly shaded this, I think, this route, so you won't be too hot if it's hot. Or who knows, might be raining, you'll need an umbrella. <laughs> well, this is Southern Oregon. <laughs> yeah, I know. It could be so, snowing. And, and then right. So and then what about the agility? Um uh Okay, I'll they, get into that as we go through the program here. Okay. Um the um the registration is from nine o'clock to ten, and then ten to two, you can walk your dog anytime. At noon, Mayor Cell is going to cut the ribbon for the park. So we'll be officially open as the dog park. And then right after that, the agility course, we're going to set that up in the big dog park area. And the trainer is coming. It's a, uh, she's a trainer from Grants Pass. She'll have all kinds of information for you if you want to pick up the information from her there. And also, she will show... Uh, she will demonstrate a run, an actual agility run. Then she will invite, she can invite people in and she will help them kind of go through some of the things like jumps and maybe the tunnel or whatever. So you'll have the opportunity to try it with your dog. What's so think at all? Yeah, I think that's going to be terrific. And um, hopefully we'll interest some people. It's always fun to have dogs do things because they like to work you know, and they're happier if they're doing things and it's really mm -hmm. fun. So anyway, that'll be happening. Then the same trainer has a dog, a trick dog, and she is going to show us that all these tricks that she's going to show us, we can teach our dogs. <laughs> so that's going to be kind of cute and fun. So we're anxious to have, have her there and she'll be, I don't know, she'll, she'll be there for a while until, you know, people don't want to come in and do that. And then, um, Oh, I forgot to say that as you register, we are giving out free goodie bags for the dogs and you as people. Uh, the first 400 that register and get in line. So that'll be exciting for you. And then uh, Main Street Coffee is going to have food. And oh, that's great. Or, um, and then um, there's new owners at the Main Street Coffee uh, shop in town. So that'll be exciting. They'll get a good um, feel for the community. And um, there's going to be flower and fur, and they do different kinds of things, um, like dog treats and things like that. And there's a group called Ladybugs, and they are pooper scoopers. They have a service, and they come out, I think, to your house and stuff, so you can learn do about they, that. really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And then there's Nails by Bree, and she's going to be clipping nails Um I don't, I can't, I don't know if she's charging or it'll be very nominal if she does. And then there's High Lane, Highlands uh, Lane Photography and Hero Tales is going to have a booth and they'll have think, dogs for adoption. So oh, nice. If you're, if you're thinking about um, a pup, a new pup or an addition to your family, you, they're really neat people. We had them at our Halloween event and they just, they were wonderful. Um and then we're going to have uh, the chief of police will make an appearance and he's got other things that day, but he definitely wants to be there. He's awesome. He's really community oriented. So we love having him there. And then um, we're going to have the Table Rock Square Dancers and wow. they're going to they're going to come and set up on the basketball court and they're going to dance and show us some square dancing and show us um They'll invite people if they want to learn a couple of square dances, they can. And you can come around and do some do-si-dos. It'll be oh, fun. Oh, how fun. Yeah. And then um, 
there's a photo op. There's going to be a big sheet that's going to have like, you know, you can stick your head through it and stuff and, and you can take your own pictures, your own selfies and stuff. Oh, how cute. And then there's free games for the kids. There's going to be the fishing hole, bean bag and ring toss. Um, there's going to be um, a dart board, not with real darts though, with Velcro. <laughs> and um, there's going to be a cray crayon coloring station where they can color pictures. Uh, so it'll be fun. The kids can take their picture that they color. So it's kind of nice because if the parents want to, you know, set them down there and have some free time, they can do that. As you can see, we're really community oriented. We don't want to um, charge an arm and a leg for stuff. So, you know, we have the free games for the kids. The The main money maker for us, we'll have a 50-50 raffle. Oh, nice. Um, and we do really well with that. There will be a few uh, raffle items, mostly dog uh, related. So that'll be good. And then um, we, I... I we like I said, we want to be educational. We want to be community oriented. You know, we we're not out there to make a killing. The our money maker is the donate the dogs, the dog walk, and that twenty five dollars a dog is is basically the donation. You know, for mm -hmm. the walk, and mm -hmm. so that's our money maker. And you know, we're not out to make millions of dollars here. We just want to have we want to do good for the community mm -hmm. and help and so, support the the keeping up the dog part yeah yeah mm -hmm. so do you have any other questions of us um well let's uh uh for people who'd like to get involved uh what is the website i was afraid you were gonna ask oh okay <laughs> that's all right you know what we'll post it on um, face go on facebook and it okay. has all that information also okay. um what's the, what's the name of the facebook page is it the Eagle Point Dog Park or Chain? Uh, I think it's the Bar Park Boosters. Okay. So either you can either look it up at Eagle Point um, Bar Park or the e or the Eagle Point um, Boosters. Okay. And the ribbon cutting is uh, at noon on April twenty seventh at yes. the the new Chamberlain Dog Park. Yes. And the mayor will be there and the police chief will be stopping by and Jean yes. will be there. You can get yes. your picture taken with her and her dogs. <laughs> my dogs are going to be home because I'm going to be too busy to be watching oh, my dogs. Okay. okay, well, you can get your picture taken with Jean. So um, how long has this process taken from start to finish? The, you mean the park? Yeah, for you. How long has it been? How long have you been working on it? I've been involved about two years. Okay. So it's, um, but I, I know other people have been working on it, you know, kind of, you know, not as heavy duty as we've been doing, but, um, you know, and hopefully we'll be, we're coming to the end of, you know, what we need to do, which will be nice. And then the, um, there'll be other projects. You'll probably see me coming back to talk about something else that we need in, in Eagle Point. But um, I do know that Central Point, Almost every town, even Gold Hill, has a dog park, and Central Point does not have a dog park. And I do know that the um, I talked to one of the council members there, and there they've approved a park, a new site for a park. I think it's somewhere um, between the freeway and Bear Creek. It's it on off of Table Rock. There out, oh, out okay. north of a little bit north of actually south of Central Point, but. Um, They've got everything in, but they haven't started it, but they've got, I think the money set aside for it and everything. And they're going to have a dog park there plus a regular park. Oh, that's so, so exciting. So that's good. So almost all the communities, Jacksonville has a dog park, you know, it's just. So Eagle Point's yeah. one of the last ones. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such and, a dog uh, friendly. I know. Town. Everybody has a dog or two. That's what I said. And I, I kept, I tease everybody I said, even little Eagle Point. Has <laughs> Shame on us. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so exciting. Gene Yeager, uh, very instrumental in bringing about the reality of the new dog park in Eagle Point. So Gene, we'd love to have you on maybe at the end of the year and hear how things went. Uh, and good luck on April 27th. The ribbon cutting is at 12 noon at Chamberlain Dog Park in Eagle Point. Yes. Yeah, thanks for being on. Folks, uh, we're going to have to wrap it up. We want to say thank you to John L. Scott, Ashlyn, and Medford 
Guy Giles Mutual of Mortgage, and our local Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, also known as ARVAR. We appreciate you very much for sponsoring this show. Educational show comes on every week. Couldn't do it without you. I'm Alice Lima, John L. Scott Real Estate. Thank you, Gene Yeager. That was Thank great. Thank you. Well, have a great Southern Oregon weekend, folks. Bye now.